Whoever said the world is getting smaller didn't know what the hell they were talking about. The world is a huge place, full of confusing corners, baffling mazes, and unexpected obstacles. Especially for action heroes hunting down villains and completing missions. Nine times out of ten, your hero is going to get lost during that car chase or foot race. And that tenth time, it'll be because the chase never started at all. Whether it's chasing Vesper's kidnappers in Casino Royale, or stupidly outrunning an Atrociraptor in Jurassic World Dominion, Everybody's getting lost in a world where you don't have a navigation chip surgically implanted into your brain. In this video on Nerd Explains, I'm going to pop the tires on your favorite chase scenes from movies and video games. I'm going to tell you why your heroes will get lost. There's a super simple reason. Almost every chase sequence is doomed to fail. Chasing a moving target through a maze typically requires you to see what you're chasing. This is the real clencher. Maintaining visual contact is often the only way a chase happens at all. The second you lose visual, your target's possible escape routes and hiding places increase exponentially, and your chances of guessing which choice they made drops to almost zero. Imagine chasing someone down an alley and losing sight of them. You turn the corner and find a hundred doors between you and the street ahead. Your search area has expanded drastically in seconds, all but destroying your chances of resuming the chase. Maintaining the almighty visual contact is very difficult for a number of reasons. One, the world is a complex maze. There are physical obstacles everywhere, in every hallway and around every corner. Locked doors, other humans, a slippery bit of trash on the floor. There is unpredictable sh** in the way at all times. An empty alley one day could be a minefield of dump trucks and trash cans tomorrow. Two, we can barely navigate that maze with advanced technology. In peacetime, when we have all the time and tech in the world at our disposal, we still have a hard time navigating to static locations or objects. Think about how many times you get lost on a daily basis. How many times have you missed an exit, even with a GPS shouting at you? How many times have you caused a bottleneck at a grocery store because they rearranged the aisles? How many times has your noob visited a building and needed a wall on the map to show you where to go. Then imagine navigating any of that in a life and death chase with someone else bringing us to three. You can't know where the other person in the chase is going to be. Chasing an unpredictable moving target through a maze is insanely difficult. Most characters in movies and games don't have access to a mini map and a tracker telling them where the other guy's gonna be. This is why in movies like Mission Impossible or Spy, someone's on their earpiece barking directions at the character while looking at satellite imaging. It's all also why police departments invest in helicopters and use them for car chases. To navigate, our brains have to understand the direction we're facing and the direction of our target. In movies and games, the person being chased isn't calling out their moves to the guy that's chasing them. Yet, time and time again, the characters chasing each other display an uncanny, almost telepathic ability to track where their target is going to go. 4. You can't anticipate their behavior. The chasee can juke you, hide from you, set up a trap, quickly change their outfit throw a trash can in your way, or any number of things that impede your chase that you simply cannot predict. 5. Your heroes will get tired. Chase sequences aren't marathons, they're sprints, especially in a foot chase. One character is literally hunting the other to exhaustion. No one's jogging here. Your heart's racing, lungs heaving, sweat in your eyes, intracellular acidification of your muscles, turning them into wet, limp noodles. On top of all that, the characters still have to climb fences, dodge cars, shove innocent bystanders, out of the way, navigate buildings they've never visited before, and make peace with the very likely possibility that their target can hide around the corner and shoot, punch, or stab them on sight. Exhaustion almost guarantees that if the pursuer can't outrun their prey, they will lose sight of them. And like I've said before, once you can't see your target anymore, the chase is already lost. Yeah, yeah, adrenaline. Well, unlike being underwater, adrenaline does benefit us above ground. But guess what? It also benefits both the chaser and the chasee effectively nullifying any hormonal advantage. We can see this play out in the Shia LaBeouf movie, Charlie Countryman. Shia has a good five second head start before two goons chase him through a tenement in Bucharest crowded with obstacles. He outruns them to the third floor where he hides underneath a comforter while locals misdirect the goons. He goes around a courtyard only to find the two goons have beat him there. He doubles back to a ladder that leads to the roof. Once there, he leaps off into trash, Assassin's Creed style, where the goons chase him over cars, through rallies, 
over fences to the subway. They corner him in a dead end, where he leaps onto an escalator and then loses them in a fake out, trapping them in a departing subway car. All right, let's address the teleportation powers these two henchmen clearly have. You're telling me this silver fox can outrun a guy in his 20s to the second floor of this building. He even beats his younger partner up there. And before you ask, no, they're not different people. It's the same two guys outrunning him throughout this scene. As for the chase itself, this building would be an absolute maze. The three of them would have to know the blueprint for this building like the back of their hand to navigate or find anyone here. All Shia has to do is hide behind any door before these two magic thugs can turn the corner. Even hiding under the blanket confused them momentarily. When he leaps off the building, no one is there to see him jump. Do I buy one of the goons going down to ground level in case he jumps? Sure, but one of them is likely going up that ladder to see if he's cornered, and it's not a small roof. Both of them would have to read his mind to beat him to the ground by the time he leaps, and to make it to the side of the building to see where he runs. As for this chase through the streets, there are multiple times where the henchmen lose sight of Shia. If he doubles back at any point, they'd never be the wiser. Instead, we get two goons with super stamina who teleport wherever he is and chase him down into a maze-like side subway station, where they match him step for step, even when he flings himself over a railing onto an escalator that leads to an entirely different area. If he just darted up these stairs instead of returning to the bottom, they would have never caught him. While I absolutely believe the characters make stupid choices, in this scenario, the chase relies on the bad guys, one, being able to keep up with their younger target, two, knowing their target's moves before he makes them, and three, teleportation whenever it's needed to keep the chase going. Bad coincidences happen, but this is pure core choreography. One of the most insane foot chases has to be in the French action film District B-13. Lado, cornered in an apartment when a gang comes to kill him. When the goons tear down the door, Lido bounds over their heads using parkour, then owns his building like a jungle gym, leaping through windows, down fire escapes, and around the outside of the building with rope until he takes to the rooftops. He leaps across several, but finds goons waiting for him in the next building. They chase him back onto the roof until he attempts a long jump to a separate apartment complex, escaping to parkour another day. In this rare case, Lido does know this apartment complex like the back of his hand. He knows the entire area extremely well because it's a walled off ghetto he's lived in his entire life. His pursuers also know this district well. The gang isn't just sending killers to get him, they're sending acrobatic killers. Even this scene though, relies on the pursuers having knowledge of Lido's actions ahead of time and being able to unrealistically beat him to locations. Lido scales entire sections of the building building in seconds, only to find thugs waiting for him wherever he goes. Unless this criminal enterprise employs psychic acrobatic hit squads the size of the LAPD, none of this is happening. The rope sequence alone could get him down to the bottom of the building in seconds before the rest of this gang could even get to the elevator, if this building even has one. The point is, you have to be able to see the person you're pursuing in order to keep chasing them, or you need to know what they're going to do before they do it. The second they disappear out of view, you'd better have a bird's eye view of them or a tracker on them, or they are gone. Wido's unpredictable behavior, his intimate knowledge of the building's escape routes, and his ability to outrun the gang to the point where they cannot see him, guarantees his escape long before gang members teleport ahead of him during this chase. In Casino Royale, James Bond takes it to another level when he chases a bomb maker named Malaka into a construction site, losing sight of him almost immediately in the chaos of dust and machinery. He commandeers a bulldozer, destroying everything in his path until he slams the caterpillar into the second floor of the building. He shortcuts Malaka's ascent, then chases them higher and higher, matching Malaka's parkour skills with his intelligence and determination until they're fist fighting atop a crane. Malaka nearly knocks Bond off, parkours down onto another crane, then the building, bounding over tables and down elevator shafts, while Bond triangulates Malaka's next move by sight. Malaka makes it to the ground, then to the Madagascar consulate, where Bond causes a national incident, shooting up the place, and eventually kills Malaka and then escapes by blowing up a gas tank. Of course, it is an amazing action sequence, one that wouldn't have happened. After Bond chose the bulldozer over chasing Malaka on foot, Bond breaks visual contact with his target to hop into that bulldozer, take out the driver, and then slowly accelerate the machine through a limited field of view. Malaka is a well-trained athlete running at top speed with no reason to stop. He also has no reason to go up instead of through the building. Real talk, Malaka would be 
be long gone, having slipped away the second Bond lost sight of him. In Dying Light, Kyle Crane is forced to navigate a tunnel full of roided out volatile zombies who crawl out of small access holes at every turn, chasing him over gangways, through zombie infested sections, and across deadfalls as he tries to parkour to safety. His adrenaline is raging, his stamina flags. At several times, he's slowed by a warning, you are exhausted. The volatiles quickly gain on him, screeching in his ears, slashing at him with their claws. They knock him from walkways, where he desperately clings to steel beams, using the last of his strength to pull himself up. Finally, he leaps for safety of a ladder across a 10-foot gulf. A volatile slams him into the wall but falls, and he watches as his vicious infected pursuers fall to their deaths trying to reach him. This scenario demonstrates every reason I've given for why you wouldn't survive a chase. Crane is running blind through an unmapped tunnel maze full of deadly monsters. No parkour in the world can save him from running into a wall of zombies, missing a pipe, or taking a wrong turn. He has no way of anticipating where the next volatile will come from. He's He's running on pure instinct, pure survival. He has his weapon and agility, but nothing can save him from sheer exhaustion. Bad decisions made in panic, or the hands of a creature in the dark that he can't see. Without a heads-up display with a mini-map beacon directing him through a map designed as a straight shot to escape to the surface, he's lost. And getting lost means his corpse is feeding volatile babies back at their nest. Of course, the same reasons why your heroes will get lost apply to car chases too. Let's start with the grandfather of all chases movies, Bullet. Steve McQueen spots two hitmen following him. He pulls into a neighborhood and disappears. The hitmen are clueless until McQueen sneaks up behind them, igniting a kick chase through the streets of San Francisco. He stalks them to the highway, nearly wrecks avoiding a motorcycle, and then catches up to them again before they drive off the road and die in a fiery explosion. At the beginning of that scene, McQueen got lucky. He spotted the tail before the tail realized they'd been spotted, so settling up behind them is totally plausible. While he has to dodge other cars and keep up with their evasive maneuvers, he can still see his targets, so following them is also doable, right up until he skids out onto a dusty edge of the highway. After after that, it's the baddie's own fault they died. Had they taken two turns off the highway before McQueen could get back on the road again, he would have never found them. In a real world with smarter villains, McQueen charges back onto an empty highway with no way of knowing where they went. Let's return to Casino Royale to see James Bond struggle with the same problem. Vesper leaves the restaurant and gets yanked into a car. Bond visually tracks the car as it speeds away, jumps into his Aston Martin DB5, and gives chase, appearing suddenly on a dark, empty highway, where he narrowly views Years off the road in time to avoid crushing Vesper into road jelly. That quick cut from Bond speeding away in his car to the empty highway, there is zero chance Bond is going in the right direction. How could he? He has no idea where his target is going. I mean, unless his DB5 has a built-in Eva Green proximity detector, his ability to track her is limited by his actual eyesight. Whatever happened in that scene cut, it definitely was not Bond chasing a vehicle he could see. If he had been able to see it, they wouldn't have had time to leave Eva like a maiden on a train track for him to run over. In Fast and the Furious 6, Owen Shaw escapes an ambush in a custom-built F1 race car by detonating explosives, which destroy most of the police force sent to capture him. Despite this, Dom's team and a squadron of cars are on him in seconds, chasing him through the streets of London. When police cars come at him head-on, Shaw shifts the plating on his car and launches them into the air, directly in front of his pursuers, including Dom and his crew. Shaw has the upper hand here in about seven different ways. Now not just with his technology and an explosive prep, but because Dom and his team aren't even in their cars when the chase begins. Not only that, but it's nighttime. It's dark. There's lots of traffic and distracting lights. Only a few seconds later, Dom suddenly speeds in out of nowhere, moving perpendicular to Shaw's course, gaining sight of him for a split second before Shaw uses that tiny F1 car to effortlessly veer in and out of traffic, tossing cop cars out of his way like paper balls. All Shaw would need to do here is zip through traffic, take a couple turns, and disappear. They have no way to track him once they lose sight of him, and let's be honest, they wouldn't have caught up to him in the first place. Let's make fun of Jurassic World Dominion while we're at it, since it has ridiculous foot chases and crazy car races. Owen and Claire arrive to the narrow labyrinthine city of Valletta in Malta. When the gunfire begins, a CIA 
operative spikes the tires of a truck carrying a truss of raptors, sending it crashing through a wall. Owen chases a smuggler through the Malta's black market, where they narrowly dodge building tall carnivores and brawl within reach of fight dinos. Owen learns Santos has their kid and Claire vows to find her. The CIA bounds into the Atrasa Raptor scene with a peripheral vision of blind men before Santos sicks her killer dinos on him. Claire tails Santos to an apartment where she learns the fate of her kid right before Santos trains an Atrasa Raptor on her. Claire bounds out a window and the world's most ridiculous chase begins. Claire outruns the beast on foot over and through buildings before she leaps across an alley and slams into a railing. She lands in an old truck where she's saved by pilot Watts. While they navigate the street with an Atrasa Raptor hot on their tail, Owen ends up on the back of a motorcycle with two of his own beasts to contend with. Owen narrowly avoids a collision. Claire clotheslines her dino and Owen speeds through the human equivalent of an all-you-can-eat buffet. Owen reaches the airfield where Watts and Claire are escaping by plane as the Atrasa Raptors catch up to him. He speeds up onto the plane and a motorcycle trick shot knocks the apex predator into the ocean. Ignoring the other insane impossibilities here and just talking about the chases, you know what I'm gonna say. Santos would definitely have trackers on her expensive dinosaurs, so her finding the Atrus Raptors after the crash is almost a guarantee. But Claire navigating from a black market to this random crash site? That's not happening, unless she can read Santos's mind. Same thing with Owen knowing how to navigate through a twisting city center to the airfield on the motorcycle. Knowing where the airport is in relation to the city center, I can buy. Knowing how to get there on a street by street basis while getting chased by dinos and cut off by trucks, not without a navigational implant. Imagine it, you're being chased by reptilian killers ready to rip you apart with razor sharp teeth and claws. You just barely scrape by finding a transport fast enough to outrun the beasts. And now you have to speed through narrow alleys and plazas filled with people and tables and chairs, down sudden steps, dodging car traffic in a city you've probably never visited before in your life. Both Claire and Owen need to buy a lottery ticket after this because one truck backing up or one wrong turn down a dead end and they're all on the lunch menu. Don't get me wrong, chase sequences are awesome, but they usually rely on a bit of plot magic to work, both for the hunted and the hunter. The next time you're chased, just hide. If they still find you, strip until you find the tracker they put on you. Change your clothes and disappear into a crowd like Jason Bourne. Got any other examples of ridiculous foot chases or car chases? Let me know in the comments. Yeah.